Hello everyone and welcome to Storytime with Cat and Melody! Melody! Today we're going to be doing The Biggest Pumpkin Ever. It is by Stephen Kroll. <laughs> I'm going to tell him one more thing. Okay. I just did a craft and we're letting my craft dry right now. Yeah, so parents, this is what we did this morning. Oh, it's still drying. We took a canvas board and she And was, we oh, hanged it up. Well, with yeah, the, but let it dry. Oh, there goes the glue. We'll put that back there. <laughs> well, it was so pretty that it just stuck uh, yeah, off. Yeah, it just kind of stuck off. But we're going to get our book ready. Show them the big, show them a picture of the book again. Lift it up. This uh, is this is what it's called. All right, <laughs> the biggest pumpkin ever. Let's get started. Oh, can I show them that? Oh one? yeah. Okay. Well, this used to be to have a bunch of pumpkin stickers, but somebody stuck them on everything else. Well, that's a banana on her nose. See that silly banana? It's a sticker. She didn't want to take it off. All right. <laughs> the biggest pumpkin ever by Stephen Kroll. Here's our first page. Once there were two mice who fell in love with the same pumpkin. Let's see what happens on the next page. All right. Take a little looky here. Clayton, the house mouse, noticed it one day in the vegetable garden. It was still little and, gl and green, but Clayton thought he could make it grow really big. It might even get big enough to win the grand prize at the town pumpkin contest. Ooh. Desmond, the field mouse, discovered the pumpkin the same day. He thought that if he helped it grow, it could become the biggest jack-o'-lantern in the neighborhood. Ooh, let's see what happens next. Can I tell them a little bit? about something else and after we finish the story that afternoon clayton watered the pumpkin he also mixed up some fertilizer of manure and water he spread the mixture around the pumpkin to make it grow larger that very same night desmond went into the garden he watered the pumpkin too he also spread some manure and mixed water around it. Alright, on to the next page. The next day, Clayton watered and fertilized the pumpkin. The next night, Desmond did the same and the little pumpkin began to grow. By the end of the month, the pumpkin was so large Clayton couldn't believe his eyes. It's getting so big. My goodness, said Clayton's mother, and it's not even full grown. Clayton shrugged. All I do is water it, he said. Clayton's mother whispered into his ear. If you want the pumpkin to grow faster, she said, you should use sugar water. That night, Desmond brought his brother Morris to see the pumpkin. Morris knew everything there was to know about growing things. Well, that's some pumpkin, he said. <laughs> Desmond shrugged. All I do is water it, he said. Morris whispered in his ear. Maybe you should try watering it with sugar water instead. The next day, Clayton dug a small hole beside the pumpkin vine. <laughs> In the hole, he placed a bowl full of sugar water. He cut the vine a few inches from the pumpkin. In the cut, he, he put one end of a piece of a candle wick. Then, he put the other end in the bowl of sugar water. That night, on the other side of the pumpkin, Desmond did exactly the same thing. 
they're both gonna water it with sugar water. Within a week, the pumpkin was twice the size it had been. Within two weeks, it was absolutely enormous. Look at that giant pumpkin. Go to the next page. Clayton was amazed. He ran down the road and peeked into his friend's Jimmy's pumpkin patch. The pumpkin Jimmy was growing for the contest looked much smaller. Clayton scratched his head. I have an amazing pumpkin, he said out loud. And I think I'm going to win the contest. Uh-huh. Jimmy won't. <laughs> that night, Desmond and his brother Morris spent a long time looking at the pumpkin. How do you think it got that big? Desmond asked. Morris shrugged. Maybe a little bit of luck, a little skill. It's going to make some jack-o'-lantern, said Desmond. It sure is, said Morris. All right, let's go to the next page. A week later, Clayton noticed the pumpkin was bigger than the family car. During the day, everyone he knew came by to admire it. At night, all the field mouse gathered around do the same. Whoa. By now, summer was almost over, and in a week, the pumpkin would be full grown and starting turning yellowish and then orange. A few weeks after that, it would be ripe and ready for the pumpkin contest. And it would never, ever, how would they do it? Clayton could hardly wait. The pumpkin was growing so fast, it would soon be larger than his house. Then he had a terrible thought. If the pumpkin was so big, how would he get it to the contest? Why, it wouldn't fit in his red wagon. It wouldn't even fit in a truck. Clayton decided to worry about this when the time came. You ever seen a pumpkin that big? No. Whoa. Maybe we should try that. So maybe we'll build our own pumpkin. All right, let's keep reading. That night, the weather grew colder. Thinking there might be an early frost, Clayton rushed out to the pumpkin with his blanket. But one was not enough. Soon he was rushing back and forth, carrying all the blankets from the house. As he worked, he hummed a little song. And as he hummed, he heard someone else singing. He also began to realize that someone else was covering the, blank the pumpkin with blankets. Who could that be? Morris. Oh, no, Morris is the brother, but Desmond too had seen the danger of an early frost. He too had brought blankets for the pumpkin. And as he worked, he sang a little song. And as he sang, he began to realize someone else was working and humming. They're both adding blankets to the pumpkin. So it will be cozy one. Cozy. Clayton stopped humming. He put down his pile of blankets and peered around the corner of the pumpkin. Desmond stopped singing. He put down his blankets and peered around the corner of the pumpkin. What's going to happen next? They're going to fall down and burst into laughter. <laughs> the two of them bumped heads and fell down. You've been feeding the pumpkin, said Clayton. Well, you've been feeding the pumpkin, said Desmond. That's why it got so big, said Clayton. That's why it got so big, said Desmond, and they burst out laughing. No wonder it was getting so big. When everything had been explained, Clayton said, I know I'll win the contest if I can get the pumpkin to town. Desmond smiled. I'll help you. Just let me carve the pumpkin into a jack-o'-lantern for Halloween when the contest is over. It's a deal, said Clayton. A deal, said Desmond. And they shook on it. Look at that little mouse handshake. So cute. The morning of the contest was bright and sunny. Mice were bringing their pumpkins to town square by truck and car and wagon. Some were rolling them on the ground. That's a neat way to get a pumpkin to town. Suddenly, they all stopped short. Over the fields came the biggest pumpkin anyone had ever seen. 
it was being pulled by a hundred field mice on motorcycles. <laughs> Gotta bring that big old pumpkin. When the pumpkin reached town, it was too big for any of the streets. Clayton had to explain why they couldn't bring the pumpkin into the square. It's just too big. The mayor understood at once. He led the crowd to the giant pumpkin and pinned the first prize ribbon onto the side. Then everyone danced around it. Dance break. Go pumpkin. All right, all right. <laughs> Who would have believed this, said Clayton as he danced. Who would have believed this, said Desmond at the same moment. Whoa. They're starting to carve the big pumpkin. Mommy. Hang on. When the celebration was over, the hundred field mice pulled the pumpkin back to the field. The day before Halloween, they carved it into the best jack-o'-lantern ever. They take it out of the seeds. Uh-huh. And on Halloween night, its wonderful smiling face could be seen glowing for miles around. The end. That Bye, was, kids. Yep, that was The Biggest Pumpkin Ever by Stephen Kroll. Bye, kids. Bye. Have a great day.